Have you ever been to Parliament Hill in Ottawa? There are so many statues and memorials. It's quite an education just walking around. It's like an outdoor museum. Of course, we have memorials to kings and queens and great prime ministers and other leaders of the past. We also have political memorials, too, like to the famous five early feminists who fought to get women the right to vote. Good idea. We even have statues to foreigners, like this one to Joseph Brandt, an Indian leader born in New York who fought against the revolutionaries in the American War of Independence and later relocated to Canada when the Brits lost. Or this one, John Butler, another American born in Connecticut who was on the losing side of the U.S. Revolution and moved to Canada in his later years too. And then there are the memorials to our soldiers in our wars. But there are other memorials too to non-soldiers. There's this small monument to foreign aid workers that was built uh, to honor two Canadian foreign aid workers, one who died in Africa and one in Chechnya. Now, I have no quarrel with any of the people these statues or memorials remember. Even all the politicians, they're all noble, some more than others. I'm just making the point that we have a lot of statues out there and the threshold for getting one doesn't seem particularly high. But there's one memorial that isn't there, a memorial to the victims of communism, which is odd considering communism murdered close to 100 million people in the last century and was a source of so many refugees to Canada. China's Mao Zedong killed 65 million people uh, of his own people through murder and starvation. I've seen estimates even higher. Lenin and Stalin killed 20 million. I note that both of these figures are larger than the number of people that Adolf Hitler dispatched. And then there are the smaller mass murders. Communist North Korea, Communist Vietnam, Communist Cambodia, where anywhere, anyone with glasses was murdered on suspicion of being a liberal intellectual. Amazing. And then there are the communist murders in our own hemisphere, like Castro and Che Guevara. We're building a human rights museum in Winnipeg based on an original idea to remember Hitler's Holocaust of six million Jews. But where's the memorial for the hundred million victims of communism. Well, it was proposed years ago, but it immediately ran into political opposition. Seriously, opposition here in Canada. Directors of the National Capital Commission, the government agency that's responsible for Ottawa and Hull, Quebec, immediately objected to it because it was so, you know, judgmental of the murderers. I'm not making this up. It was a memorial to the victims of communism. But Hélène Grandmaitre, a director of the National Capital Commission, said, and I quote, I was unsettled by this name, and other members of the committee agreed with me. We should make sure that we are politically correct in this designation, unquote. Ah! Adil Ayad couldn't agree more. He's also on the board, and he explained why he agreed. Canada has a communist party, he said, and communists might not like it. Maybe Chinese communists might not either. Here's a quote from him. I'm, it's not communism itself that we should be fighting here. It's rather totalitarianism we should be against in any form, unquote. <laughs> Moron, what kind of communism is there other than forced totalitarian communism? I guess there were once a few tiny towns that were voluntarily communist in Israel called kibbutzes, where people lived in communal farms, but most of them have faded away or changed to join the capitalist economy, but they weren't countries. Every communist country in history has been a totalitarian regime, always were, still are. But this buffoon bureaucrat wouldn't allow a memorial for their 100 million victims, lest he hurt some feelings of communists. Could you imagine someone saying the same thing, opposing a memorial for the victims of Nazi Germany because it might hurt the feelings of the Ku Klux Klan? So the memorial's name was changed to the victims of totalitarian communism. Fine, what a foolish fake distinction, but it was approved, fine. And the conservative government made a big noisy splash about announcing that two years ago but they didn't actually announce anything other than a small plot of land would be set aside. They didn't chip in any money. They said the victims of communism could pay for that themselves. Seriously, not one dime from the government. So of the $1.5 million needed for this memorial, about $100,000 has been raised. The thing hasn't been built, and frankly, at this rate, probably never will be. So that's the state of statues on Parliament Hill. Lots of old politicians, some war memorials, and a few other statues but no money for victims of communism. Don't you know we're in tough economic times? All right. Well, news comes today from Tony Clement, president of the Treasury Board, you know, the cabinet minister in charge of all the money, that the conservatives have found $2.5 million for memorial, idolizing someone named Norman Bethune. Norman Bethune? Yeah, Norman Bethune. Hey, you probably don't know about him. He really never spent much time in Canada. He was born in 1890, got his medical degree here but he pretty soon left 
for good. You see, he was a communist, and communism was flourishing around the world. He joined the Communist Party in Montreal, sure, but that was too boring for him. He wanted action. So he went to Spain to be part of that country's civil war between communists and fascists. Now, the communists lost. No problem. Bethune left for China, where he teamed up with Mao Zedong, the greatest mass murderer in the history of the world. Bethune wasn't particularly noteworthy himself. He was a soldier who happened to be a doctor. He set up a mobile blood transfusion truck in the Spanish Civil War, but as he said, it was always about communism. It was his way of fighting. The communist revolution in China was successful, unlike the one in Spain, but Bethune himself died from an infection 10 years before Mao's bloody victory. But Mao used Bethune as a propaganda device, writing an essay extolling Bethune as an example of a foreigner who believed in communism, what Vladimir Lenin would call a useful idiot, a foreigner who would actually help communists for free out of some sort of psychological need for therapy. One of Bethune's biographers suggested it was the perfect fit for the doctor, a way for him to be a good communist, but also to be revered by the masses, feeding his ego like a good selfish capitalist might. Well, what did Bethune fight for? Not for health, for communism, for Mao. Here's a quick documentary reminder of some of Mao's work in the Cultural Revolution. An elaborate system of special post boxes and sorting offices for anonymous denunciations trapped thousands of businessmen. <laughs> Sentencing rallies, as they were called, were staged as public spectacle. To distance themselves from a relative's alleged crimes, wives denounced husbands, sons denounced their parents. Those judged to be major criminals were taken in lorries straight to the execution ground. The more fortunate went to prison. I've seen estimates 60, 80, 85 million people murdered or died by famine. Look, it was modeled in many ways after the Nazis, the dehumanization of enemies, the snitching, the mass murders, the cult of personality. That's what Bethune served. That's who Bethune served. And now Norman Bethune is getting a $2.5 million museum in his honor in Canada to idolize this man? The official Conservative Party press release, the government press release, says Bethune will receive a, quote, Heroes welcome at this new tax-paid museum. Here's what Tony Clement said when announcing this tribute to a communist warrior. Quote, The thing about Dr. Bethune is that people see different things about him depending on their perspective. I think we as conservatives can be comfortable that there's a message here broader than just his communism that goes to his humanism and entrepreneurship. Unquote. Humanism, eh? Is that what Mao's revolution was about? Huh? Entrepreneurship. You're, you're kidding, right? In a revolution that destroyed private property, where forced collectivization led to that mass famine, where the great leap forward was a great leap backward, not just economically, but in terms of human dignity. Seriously, that's humanism? Maybe we'll spend $2.5 million celebrating the transportation and industrial achievements of the Third Reich. Hell, they built some great Autobahns over there, didn't they? Why can't we focus on that? Why does everyone have to be all Holocaust, Holocaust, Holocaust all the time? <laughs> that's how stupid that argument is. Look, a $2.5 million interpretive center whitewashing a communist hero. We don't even have interpretive senators for all our former prime ministers like that. This is grotesque. This is abominable for a government to do. Look, if a private group of individual commun communists wanted to build this, fine, whatever. Even if the embassy of China wanted to use their money to build this, well, fine, I guess. We'd call it foreign propaganda. But for a so-called freedom-loving, so-called conservative government that can't find a penny for the 100 million victims of communism? To celebrate a propaganda tool of Mao Zedong? That's a disgrace.